Thanks everyone, and it's, uh, it's good to see you guys. Caleb, let's just run through this quickly. We're late, and if we want to get out of here soon, now uh, we better start. I'm using some new technologies here, so uh, hopefully it'll work out right with the bat. But uh, before we even start, uh, I'd like Parhan. Is anybody else here going to the nationals? I just want to recognize people because. Uh, All right, man. Binder done that, I know how much uh, work goes into that and uh, uh, for, for anyone here, maybe in, in the other classrooms, uh, if you ever wondered uh, what it takes to, to get to the next level, this is the guy to talk, as well as uh, uh, the veteran officials. The good thing is I'm presenting tonight, bad thing is uh, John told me, like, Augie, oh, you're close to retirement, so you need to start uh, presenting stuff so that you can share that knowledge. Uh, once we, this is not my natural habitat, my natural habitat is uh, possible for and that's where I feel the most comfortable. That's where I uh, like working with my partners, and that's where the uh, transfer of knowledge happens the easiest. So what we're going to do tonight is just go over uh, the presentation and uh, some comments, but I really want to make it uh, a conversation because uh, I'm not here to lecture you. Uh, I would much prefer if we kind of talk about issues that uh, we believe uh, we can get better at on the floor. And over the last uh, couple of months, I was kind of uh, really thinking about uh, uh, how much we as officials affect the game and how much we can change the, uh, the uh, um, complexion of the game with, uh, with our uh, attitude, with our approach to the game, and uh, with, with just with the patience. So other than 10 players on the floor with benches and coaches and everything, uh, and table as well, if table is not good, uh, everything becomes infinitely harder. Uh, but other than the players on the court, uh, uh, the thing that can throw the game off balance uh, before you know it in a hurry from zero to 60 in two seconds are coaches. And uh, I've observed uh, uh, certain patterns in, in, in our uh, uh, dealing with coaches that um, uh, I think if we all kind of uh, understand what, what our role on the floor is, we can really get better and we can bring stability to the game. Uh, as I was coming up, uh, I was always taught that technical fouls uh, need to bring stability to the game. Every technical foul we call, not just on coaches but on players as well, uh, must result in game uh, becoming more stable after that. If you need to call a technical foul and you can stabilize the game, then uh, either technical foul is not warranted or we've done something else during the game uh, and the players as well that uh, affected that outcome. So, Dealing with coaches is dealing with confrontation. Uh, when coaches step on the floor, they've got a job to do. Their job is to make the team win. And they will do anything uh, to, to help their team win, including fighting with referees, fighting for the next call, just to put their team in better position to win. Sometimes they need to uh, uh, do certain things and maybe even uh, uh, want us to call technical foul to so-called rally the troops. How we approach those is uh, now what, uh, what's going to make us or break us uh, uh, in that game. So, let's see if this works. It looks like it doesn't sound enough to go here. Alright, and I'm going to change my view to current and notes. So my apologies, this is the first time I'm using this, and uh, um, but we're not losing anything. So question to you, there's three components of our communication with, uh, with each other, with coaches, with anybody else. That's body, that's tone of your voice, our voice, and the content. I was under the impression that uh, tone of the voice and content are pretty important. Uh, I was wrong. Before you even get to the coach, he knows what he's going to get from you. If your posture, your demeanor, your, your uh, aggressive stance um, is displayed before you come to him, it's going to make him even more defensive and we're going to have uh, a lot of work on our hands to, uh, to uh, de-escalate the situation and, uh, and uh, uh, proceed the game in uh, the least confrontational way. So this graph here is pretty kind of uh, indicative of uh, what we really need to do. Um, is there anybody in this room who's never called technical foul on the coach, other than Lloyd. Uh, Lloyd, Lloyd goes um, straight down. <laughs> you'll, you'll get there quickly. 
that's one of the most stressful situations in the game. And uh, there's a reason why we always get together after a technical foul uh, so that we don't screw up the continuation of the game. So the other two officials will always uh, help the calling officials with uh, what the next step is because the calling official in most cases uh, uh, will be too excited and we can or may miss uh, the next step. So uh, one of the advices in these situations after every technical foul, we'll get together for 5-10 seconds and make sure that the non-calling official delivers information to the calling official on how we're going to proceed with the game. Before we even call a technical foul, let's remember this. The way we approach the coach, the way we talk to the coach, is going to make us or break us. So, I always thought that coaches are partners in the game. Uh, never try to kind of uh, put it uh, them versus us, uh, even though coaches sometimes present it that way. It took me quite a few years to kind of uh, put my ego aside, and when I approach the coaches, it doesn't matter what they say, it doesn't change how I feel. Uh, we've got to approach the coach completely relaxed, with relaxed body demeanor, with uh, our hands either down the body, or if you prefer, sometimes I just uh, hold my hands together before we start talking to the coach. Once we start talking to the coach, if we cross our, our, our um, arms across the chest, it's a defensive uh, motion, uh, and uh, uh, usually it's almost borderline hostile. Coaches will feel that uh, we're not open to them and will become defensive. So uh, consider that. These are little things that uh, affect the conversation in a huge way. Drop your arms, be relaxed, and uh, speak calmly, because uh, the louder they are, the softer our voice should be, and it'll it'll do wonders for us. Let's uh, let's move on with uh, uh, with our slides. Okay. The game starts when we step on the floor, and I can assure you, coaches will watch the very minute we get out of uh, the locker room, and they will follow us. And they will have their opinion on us other than uh, obviously the officials that they've been uh, work, working with for, for a while. They know what to expect from us. But they will look for officials that they think they can uh, work on on getting the next call. And that official that they don't know uh, will probably receive the brunt of uh, uh, coaches' conversation uh, to them. Uh, it's really important uh, uh, from, uh, for uh, experienced uh, uh, members on the crew, especially the crew chief, uh, to make sure that they, so to speak, protect uh, the uh, younger officials and make sure that coach understands that they cannot uh, uh, saw that, uh, that seed and, and divide us as a group. Uh, there's a few things that we can do to uh, help each other. Um, and this is one of them. So uh, approaching the coach in a uh, in relaxed manner, uh, speak in a calm, easy voice, will take us a long way in, um, in the direction of de-escalating the situation. Touching the coaches is uh, one of the no-nos that uh, uh, I learned. I, I try different things with coaches, even uh, kind of behaving, like uh, becoming a friend with coaches. It didn't work. Uh, uh, it appears to work on that game, but sometimes things I've said to the coach backfired. So, two things. Uh, don't try to be friendly with coaches during the game, that doesn't mean you're an enemy. But don't try to say something that can be used against you. Somebody smart a long time ago said, uh, silence cannot be quoted. But there's also uh, phrases that we can use uh, uh, to get coaches on our side. So keep distance between you and the coach, and especially no hugging. Some people can get away with it, but uh, most of us uh, cannot. Positive body language. Uh, it starts with that, and uh, it'll open the door to uh, um, to having a good conversation with the coach that will result in uh, in in positive outcome. Another thing is, uh, I practice this uh, in my regular life. Uh, I love when people look me in the eyes when I talk to them, and I also return the favor by looking them in the eyes. I think uh, uh, we build uh, trust, trustful relationship between us and uh, uh, the other person, and it really helps with the coaches. The first thing, uh, when you get to the coach, sometimes they just want us to listen to them. And 
offer it to them. Come, look them in the eyes, coach, I'm here. How can I help? And uh, sometimes that's all that you need to do. You just need to have that feeling that uh, listening to them and that we're not confrontational. Eyes can show everything, then, including conviction or lack there. So uh, uh, let's be confident. Let's uh, know what we're doing. And in most cases, uh, the outcome will be positive. Here is something that uh, uh, really helped me going from stage to stage. Uh, coaches call us uh, uh, to talk to us to engage. And uh, a lot of times, they just make certain statements. We may agree or disagree with statements. One of the most important thing is uh, don't ever tell the coach that he didn't see what he saw. He tells you something, this happened, and you tell him, no coach, it didn't happen. I saw it this way. Never tell the coach that something that he saw didn't happen. The best way out of that situation is coach had a different angle on that play because this is the game of angles. Uh, at the end of the presentation, if you have time, I'll show you a few, few plays that uh, at best we're going to be split 50-50 and nobody will be wrong. So it, it, it really depends a lot which angle you, you, you look at the play uh, from and that's the, uh, that's the tool that I use with coaches. They tell me they saw something, I saw coach, I see your point. From my angle, it looked like this. And uh, number one, you basically acknowledge what they said. You're not saying that they didn't see what they saw because you're losing that battle. But on the other side, you're seeing that uh, thing in his uh, mind that uh, uh, maybe there's a different thing to that play. And because I was closer, maybe that's what happened. Uh, really good argument is uh, if we work hard and put ourselves in a good position. What I like to use, coach, I was in great position to see the play. I saw the space between the players, and this is what I saw, without questioning what the coach saw. Uh, when coaches start making statements, uh, uh, we have to quickly turn to uh, suggest that we really should uh, discuss the questions they have. Uh, I let them vent for a few seconds, but then uh, if, if they're just making statements, they just want to be heard, coach, those are statements. Do you have any questions for me? I'm here. I can help. Uh, eight out of ten times, they don't have any questions. And we're done. I just listen to them, it diffuses the situation, and we move on. But if they do have questions, then uh, let's uh, encourage them to present those questions and then answer them in the most concise, concise way. Uh, I had a nice trick. I picked uh, two or three different uh, uh, rules, actually, that uh, uh, in my experience coaches ask the most often. So I would quote them. Coach, rule 33-6. Player is entitled to land on the spot uh, if it's unoccupied by the defensive player. You go, holy crap, this guy. Most of stuff. Uh, so try that, it really does work. Okay, so one of the things that uh, once we approach the coaches is um, it's really not good to initiate the conversation with the coach. My rule of thumb is if I initiate it, uh, unless there's a physical assault, I'm not going to take it to follow the coach. So if I, for whatever reason, go to the coach to uh, uh, discuss something, I've got the need that uh, the game uh, is at the level where we need to address coach's behavior, uh, nine out of ten times, uh, uh, there is, that's not going to result in a technical foul. Uh, this will, to me, doesn't apply uh, when uh, now we respond to coach's request to talk. Uh, sometimes, uh, those conversations may result in technical fouls, but uh, um, if we build a good arsenal of tools, responses, and uh, just that uh, good behavior uh, and intention to de-escalate the situation rather than uh, escalate it by being receptive, being a good listener, maintaining that eye contact, and most importantly, showing respect for what they do. Uh, in most cases, we're not going to end up with, uh, with the toughest goal, and that's uh, uh, technical foul. It's so easy to bait an uh, excited coach into technical foul. It's easy technical foul that we need to call him. Uh, but uh, it doesn't build that relationship uh, of fairness with that coach. All they need to really know is that we're working on butts to provide uh, a fair uh, uh, chance for, every, for each team to win. That's all they really need to, to, to know from us. And how will they believe it? If uh, 
if they see that uh, honest approach, that humble approach, the ego is behind. Uh, if they see that we're not trying to win every conversation, and especially if they see that we're not trying to have the last word in that conversation with the coach, uh, they will basically accept that we're just humans, like they are, and uh, the game uh, will take a completely different uh, uh, direction. Um, tools that we can use to kind of uh, calm down the coach and uh, um, when they start yelling, I like to say, and sometimes I play my immigrant character kind of uh, um, the music and uh, coach, I'm having difficulties following your English in my second language. Can you slow down and let me know? Uh, is this what you're saying? Am I understanding you correctly? And when I kind of catch them with those questions, they don't know where to go. And then they just uh, uh, cool down and, uh, and tell me exactly what their concern is. At that point, really, they just want me to listen to them. And all I say is, uh, Coach, I'll watch it. I've been watching the top freaking game. But if I tell the coach I'll watch it, for some reason they think that I'm going to watch it, particularly after that moment. And it, it does wonders. Um, just that uh, little human uh, touch, <coughs> and, uh, it, it does really wonders. Um, another statement that I like to use uh, is, uh, if you can't settle down, I really can't understand you. When you settle down, we'll have this discussion. Uh, the harshest thing that I can say is that, you know what, I'm going to be back when we can have a tough conversation. Careful with that one, because uh, uh, I use it with coaches that I've been around for a long time, and uh, um, I think that they know me by now uh, where I really work my butt off for them, uh, and uh, it, it does help. And honestly, uh, to get to that point, uh, it took me like some 25 years, uh, out of which probably 16 or 17 on the OVA panel. Night in and night out, uh, uh, soaking wet shirt and uh, no ego. I made a fair share of mistakes like we all did in trying to find the best way to deal with them. But uh, honestly, uh, in my opinion, uh, the thing that they appreciate the most is just be human, be honest. Don't try to defend some goals that you can't defend and just tell them, we make mistakes as well. One night, uh, and uh, this was received uh, with mixed emotions on the crew. <clears throat> Excuse me, I was in Kingston and uh, it really was not a good night. Uh, three top officials, I call it the nuclear crew. Uh, and uh, we had a situation where we had uh, uh, common fall and technical fall, and we said, we agreed in the locker room, uh, if there's a technical fall, we're going to get together just for this reason so that we know what the next step is. So the officials who called technical fall administered uh, um, uh, the free throws and stuff, and we screwed up. We administered them in, in, in reverse order. And the coach saw it, and I felt embarrassed. I went to the coach and I just said this, Coach, we have good nights and we have bad nights. Tonight is our bad night. I'm sorry for that. And the coach looked at me. He was shocked. He didn't know what to say. Uh, but we didn't have a problem with that coach until the end of the game. Eventually they won, but uh, um, I think just that human approach and uh, just admit your mistake uh, rather than try to defend something that's indefensible will take us a long way. That's the report that uh, I was talking about uh, that you build with coaches uh, before the game. And I do it even at uh, high school games, uh, not just uh, college or OUA or SBA. Go to the coach, offer that firm handshake, and introduce yourself. Tell him your name, ask him for his name, and you wouldn't believe how, um, how easy uh, things become after that. There will still be contentious situations, but never forget, their job is to win. Our job is to offer equal opportunity to each team uh, to win. And that's where we clash, but uh, that's where our job is really important to have that good rapport, not just with coaches, but with players. We're talking about coaches now. So let's move on with these uh, slides. This is a good one, actually. So this is the real uh, world situation. We have uh, some contentious call. Coach comes running on the floor. A lot of people will, will apply the rule right away, bang, take the foul. My take on every situation is first attempt to de escalate. First, let the coaches hit that uh, uh, top. Allow them a couple of seconds to come down. If they linger at the top for a few more seconds, we know what to do. But if they come down, now it's the opportunity. So instead of uh, banging the coach up uh, with technical foul once he runs on the floor, which we completely can by rules, go to the coach, 
deal with the behavior first. So what's wrong here? Coach is on the floor. Let's walk him back to the bench. Okay? Coach is on the floor with his arms up. Not just coach players as well. Sometimes they, oh, I was vertical, or what the hell are you talking about and stuff? Please drop your arms and we can talk. Deal with the behavior, uh, remove that drama from the conversation, and then deal with the, with the issue that uh, got him so excited. Another tip with the players as well. You call the foul player, he's sure that he didn't commit that foul, right? And I truly believe that players don't lie. At least 99% of them, they really believe they didn't foul. They're out of their minds. They're starting to, to act and uh, you know that it's going to escalate and uh, you may have to use your tools. What I do is I report my foul and I, hey, come over here. You have two free throws to explain to me uh, uh, what's your problem and uh, uh, I will explain to you why I call it. You would be surprised the reaction in players' faces when you do that. Call them as you're administering the, uh, the free throws, talk to them. If they start showing, you know that foul, drop your arms please and talk to me. I'm here to listen to you. Uh, within 10 seconds, problem is all, and we have a partner now in that guy. He's not going to look at you uh, to try to stick it to you next time or, or do something to insult you. Uh, now we're working with that player. That's the way to get your, the players on your side. Um, one of the easiest technical fouls on a player is uh, uh, a player who thinks that uh, you should have called the foul and you give him that uh, skunk guy. Uh, he's one guy on the floor, and you're just baiting him into giving him technical foul, right? Think about this, you have nine other players on the floor, two coaches, two partners. Do something with them, forget about this guy. Clock is ticking, in five seconds, he'll forget about it. And uh, we have a game where we didn't have to interrupt it. With two minutes to go, with one team 20 points up, and we just called technical foul because uh, we had a player who gave you a look and he didn't like it. So this is all about de-escalation rather than looking for the opportunity to call a technical foul. That's how you build a relationship with coaches, that's how you build a relationship with the players as well. Yeah. Moving on. We see it every day. I had a college game a few weeks ago and uh, before my partner even got to the coach I knew that we were going to see a technical foul pretty quickly. It took about three seconds. The partner said, Coach, enough, and now sit down. That was it. Uh, you can guess that uh, the coach didn't sit down because why? He doesn't have to. And we just ordered him something that he doesn't have to do. Like, uh, uh, it's not our position to tell coach to do something that's not prescribed by rule. And by rule, coaches can stand up. Um, had we approached the coach in, uh, uh, with the intention to de-escalate, say, coach, I'm here, what is the issue, let me help you with that uh, while we're administering free throws and stuff, obviously coach thought it wasn't a problem and stuff, and for intense purposes he could have been right. A lot of times coaches are right and we have to have that courage to recognize when coaches are right and give them a little bit of leeway there and uh, really work hard on the escalating situation. So using behavior that's uh, ordering, directing, commanding, yelling, it's like adding uh, fuel to the fire. It's not going to help. Uh, we cannot get to the coach who is excited with another ego and try to prove who is right who is wrong. It doesn't serve the game, it doesn't help us, and it doesn't build that rapport, good rapport with coaches. So really careful, instead of approaching the coach in, uh, in uh, confrontational manner, uh, do it in a more uh, listening manner. Uh, uh, encourage him to talk to you and explain and just offload uh, whatever is bothering him at that uh, time and be a good listener. Uh, you know it from your personal life, uh, when somebody really is a good listener, they don't even have to say anything. Just listen and uh, absorb uh, negativity and uh, we're good, right? Another example is shut up. I, I, I won't even mention that because I really trust that nobody here can tell the coach to shut up. Oh, that's just uh, another thing is uh, uh, you go to the coach and coach, if you do it one more time, you're going to tee you up. What's going to happen next? 
is going to do just that or she. And uh, now, if we tee them, it's bad. If you don't tee them, it's worse. So never challenge the coach uh, with, with that approach. Uh, uh, what I like to use is coach to help me out. And uh, my good friend, Safe, uh, we had a great game at uh, Nipissing, and we, we were in the situation, you don't mind, do you? Sure. Yeah. Uh, we had a really good conversation. Every moment is learning for me as well. Uh, tonight I'm learning from you, saying nothing more than uh, uh, I'm learning from Ryan saying. Uh, but uh, we were in a situation where um, uh, Safe was running along the sideline, uh, passing by the coach who already had multiple technical fouls called on him this season. So pretty explosive coach. Uh, and uh, Safe, basically, uh, what was the exact wording uh, the line of this? I didn't want to put him on the spot, but uh, I know we have a good relationship. And uh, I'm trying to think, uh, I think something about don't step in my way or something. Basically, it, it was kind of commanding uh, uh, statement of please don't step in my way because uh, I can hit you. And coaches just don't respond. Even that, that's completely rational ask. Like really, I can hit you if I'm uh, But when you say don't do this or don't do that, uh, their reaction, natural reaction, is to become defensive. So what I like to do, and uh, we discussed it, and uh, coach, help me out. Please, help me out. So I'm running this way, like, I, I can hit you by accident, but then you're both in trouble. And it's amazing how well they receive it, because uh, uh, first, uh, we're polite, we use please, help me out. Uh, now it's a two-way relationship, instead of just telling them what to do. They don't like to be told what to do. So a uh, simple thing that uh, can make or break you. So on the next possession, uh, he goes, Huggy, Huggy. Why is he saying that? Like, what did I do with it? Coach, we talked about it. Don't worry about it. Everything is good. No, he didn't mention that uh, until the end of the game. So these are just the things that we went over. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty obvious. Uh, these are stressful situations, guys. Uh, honestly, if you can uh, uh, think about them and uh, reflect uh, after the games that we go through them, and uh, just uh, think how we can uh, uh, accept stuff that's really challenging and frustrating and just uh, uh, like, uh, deflect them and, and keep them calm. Uh, one of the things that uh, we bring stability to the game, the officials, at all times. That's called controlling the game. We gauge that temperature and uh, we um, draw the line in the sand and we uh, want to keep the temperature of the game below that line. So once the temperature starts approaching that line, uh, we have a few things to do. We're not going to fall into that, but uh, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, we make mistake is uh, when the game approaches that hot uh, kind of uh, uh, temperature, everybody says, okay, let's tighten it up, let's go more. I like to approach it differently. And I say, uh, let's not miss anything. That doesn't mean that we're going to call more, but we'll just ensure that we don't miss any calls. And uh, usually that will bring the game uh, right where we uh, want it. So. We're getting there. This is what's important. Good listening. They, all they need to know is that we're listening to them. And these are little tips uh, 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 to being a good listener, not just uh, on basketball floor but in real life as well. Sometimes engaging with, uh, with coaches and giving validity to their claims uh, will, will relax them. For example, hey, number 25 is holding, or, or that player is holding my guy. Uh, coach, what's, what's the number of the player? So by the time he thinks about it uh, now, uh, he knows that uh, we're going to be looking for it, and that's all that uh, we need to, to tell them. But that's not going to happen. Again, sometimes I even verbalize it. Coach, we probably missed it. And this is my favorite one, one of my favorite ones. He say, Coach, if that's what happened, I missed it. So that way, I'm not really saying we missed it, but if that's what happened, we missed it. So, so Coach still didn't, uh, is not under the impression that we're missing every call that he doesn't like, but uh, we also keep that humble side. If really what you saw, if really that happened, then we missed it. And it's, it's fair, we do miss calls. This is a good one now, so uh, I think we talked about it, it just uh, confirms sometimes before you even get to the coach, he knows uh, uh, what kind of response, response uh, he's going to get from us. Uh, so instead of being a bad cop and approaching the coach with, uh, with our hands in the pockets or uh, hands 
on our hips and stuff. Uh, let's just uh, approach him in, in a human way and, and listen and, uh, and proceed from there. But if we approach him excited, uh, if we're out of our mind and stuff, nothing is going to happen uh, in that direction because uh, we're not going to win. He looked in danger <laughs> Never forget uh, body language. Uh, uh, poker face is uh, what I like to call the face that we should have during the game for the most part, especially when communicating with coaches. Because if you go to one coach and uh, you laugh with him, the other coach will think, hey, these two guys are sticking to me now. Uh, so when communicating with coaches and when delivering uh, our, our calls and stuff, we need to keep poker face. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't show our emotions. Uh, don't have poker face throughout the game because uh, uh, it just doesn't work. We're, we're human and we need to show emotions. Uh, smiling, laughing, but not in situations where it can be misinterpreted. Really careful with that. But uh, uh, also be very careful not to show disgust or, or no, that's the coach is yelling, it's a foul, and you go, no, it's not. You don't hear that stuff. You just mind your business and you don't respond to comments uh, by the coach or players during the game with your facial expressions. Uh, that can really can uh, cause them to, uh, uh, to be upset. Let's just put it that way. This is kind of part of the comment of uh, let's first deal with the behavior. Uh, when coaches and players use their um, hands and arms, it looks even more dramatic than it really should be. So as soon as they start throwing their arms up in the air or you know, gesturing and stuff, make sure you deal with that behavior. Uh, let them drop them, and then we can proceed with, uh, with the communication after that. That will actually uh, present the game in a better kind of uh, manner to the fans, and will also keep the fans under control and show them that you're in control of the game. That's one of the most uh, uh, important jobs that we have on the floor to keep the control of that game. More tips to be a good listener. We kind of covered uh, pretty much all of them. Um, the bottom one is uh, the one that's most important to me and uh, uh, in my experience really works well. Don't be defensive about our calls. Um, I learned it pretty quickly with uh, Michelle. She was, out of all, all coaches, she's probably top three in my development. Uh, she was given to a day today uh, Lloyd's favorite line, a coach, you can go up, but if you land, it's like a foul. Yeah. And, uh, Michelle. Michelle. The coach gave me a bottle of wine, and I can be from a service on my last game. That's, that's true, too. The hardest coaches are also the biggest ladies and gentlemen, honest, uh, and uh, Lloyd knows it. Uh, but Lloyd is uh, kind of in, uh, in the space of his own. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he's earned uh, a lot of respect from a lot of coaches, players, uh, wherever Lloyd shows up, uh, people know him. Uh, and, and they're already relaxed when the game starts because uh, they know they're gonna get a fair shake or, or technical. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're almost there. We're gonna uh, kind of speed through this. This is just to reiterate, guys. Uh, uh, this is not about winning. This is also not about losing. Nobody wins argument with coaches. If, if we can approach uh, that conversation uh, with, with open mind, with intention to de-escalate, uh, I think that uh, some balance uh, will be achieved where the coach feels that we address their issue and we feel that uh, we didn't have to humiliate ourselves to calm the coach down and that's what we're really uh, looking for. It's not going to happen every time and definitely you do not have to get in the last word. These are good uh, to kind of uh, build your arsenal. Um, just keep in mind, uh, what works for me or Pamela or Wally may not work for you. Uh, some statements to coaches, they will, they will be received differently when I say them and when somebody else says them. So when I tell you this is my favorite, don't automatically start using it in your next game. You need to kind of uh, really gauge uh, what kind of reaction that will have with the coach. For example, we had a tough game up north uh, 
and I did some research on that game. I always like to do research so that I'm prepared for the game. And, and sometimes when you tell the coach uh, something that happened in the previous game, uh, they realize that you actually either watch the game or did your homework preparing for the game, and they have respect for that. I prepare for every uh, important, not important, every game that I can, and I was prepared for that game. So uh, there was one situation where coach was kind of uh, on the brink of uh, getting really excited, and. I knew that he got technical foul for tossing his jacket in his previous game. So in this game, he actually wore a sweater. So as I was approaching him, I told him, uh, like we finished our conversation and as it was starting to kind of get uh, um, a little bit hitting. I said, well, coach, good thing tonight is you're not wearing your jacket, so you can't toss it during technical foul. He started laughing and the conversation was over. These are the little things that uh, we can take uh, advantage of uh, when dealing with coaches. Uh, just little human joke and it completely diffuses the situation. Tough situation is when you see the call that from your angle, your partner made it, from your angle, you're kind of 50-50. Is it really the call that you would have made? In some situation it's not and you're right by the coach. What do you tell the coach? Seriously, what do you tell the coach? Anybody? All right, I'll try. Never tell the coach what you think about this call. Never tell the coach, yeah, coach, yeah, it was charged, it wasn't blocked. Never. Even if you think it is. Number one, because your angle is different. Your partner had an angle based on which he made that call. So you could be completely wrong in saying that that was wrong call. It could be right call. But most importantly, You have to protect the integrity of the crew. You are one team on the floor. And for me, that's the most important team. Then we have two teams, then we have two matches. But my team is the most important team for me. When the game is over, we're going to go back to the locker room, we're going to watch the video, and we're going to figure out uh, is it right or wrong for one only reason, to be better next time when we have to make that call. Not to find who made a mistake and, and stuff, but to be better next time. The answer that I give to the coach is this. Coach, I see your point. Or coach, you have a good point. Or coach, I hear you. But next time my partner is here, ask him. He will tell you why he made it call. That's the best answer we can give to coaches. That's the best way to protect the integrity of the group. And quite honestly, that's the best way to earn the respect of the coaches. Because they know what they do. Yes, sir. I say I trust my partner. He had the better angle. I'll just stop. That's a good answer as well. But encourage coach to ask the partner why. Because I bet you, next time your partner is by him, he's forgotten about him. But you at least need to open the door. Okay. Same thing is that by the time you escort the coach to the bench, he's already done. He forget about how. But he was mad at me, right? Use those tools out. Use that precious time to give them to the escalator to come from that peak down because they want it. Except in situations where they want technical fouls just to rally the team, and you have to recognize that as well. So here is the jacket one. I kind of chuckled when I saw this presentation. This is a good job, and I think I mentioned it uh, as well. When coaches started to start to yell, uh, speak softly. The more they yell, the quieter you go. It does wonders. They just uh, go down in intensity and then we can have a civilized conversation. So, anybody care to complete this sentence? Simple. Right? Even in uh, our personal lives. Uh, this is really what's important. Uh, uh, when you approach the coach uh, in, in, in really hot, hot, hot situation, and uh, you're calm, collected, cool, whatever, and uh, you look him in the eye, coach, I'm here, talk to me. What are they gonna do? When the coach is losing his mind, and it was your call, you go, coach, I think I kicked this one. What do you think they're gonna do? Kick you. <laughs> Kick you.
that's pretty much all I had. I really wanted to make this kind of conversation two ways and even uh, look at some uh, uh, plays and stuff. Uh, actually, you know what, uh, if you don't mind, I just want to show you is one of the things that I enjoy the most uh, when I go and travel with my partners to uh, different locations and we sleep. The following, so we, get, we have uh, Friday and, and Saturday games and uh, we spend the whole Saturday in the hotel. Uh, we just watch clips and we argue to death. And then at the end of the day, we all learn something from it. There's no winners. There's so many calls. Uh, for example, I'll show you this one. One more time. And they came with the basket on. Really? <laughs> okay, so look at this. Drops the shoulder, it's a legal guard. Let me slow it down for you. So, vote, uh, who thinks this is offensive foul? Offensive, so okay. Defensive? 50 50. And probably you're not wrong, either way. What are the reasons that you have for calling it a block or calling it offensive? So, who voted for offensive foul? What do you think is offensive? Anyway, I think I think he threw a shot. But didn't the defensive player jump forward? He did. Yeah. He did. Well, I didn't agree with you. I called defensive foul, but I also can see why people would call defensive. You might say there's a little bit of a jump forward. The offensive player just hit your shoulder. But just this simple play illustrates the defensive player can move as close as he wants to that offensive player. Short of contact, correct? So. I'll do it one more time. You, see, you will see that the defensive player is jumping forward, right? Up and forward. Forward. It's a tie, no call. You got it. <laughs> no, but this is like really, what do you call it? What do you call it? <clears throat> well, who, who, who also made the call then? Did yeah. the trail not make the call? Shouldn't that have been the C's call? Yeah. So this is another excellent point. Uh, this is double whistle between trail and center. Who's called this is? C. C, why? Because he's got the best angle. That yeah. guy can't see the contact. He you can't see it. the space in between. One hundred percent. But the problem is C had the same call as trail, which is defensive foul. And this is not to kind of uh, say they're wrong or right. Maybe they're right because they're right there on the board. Uh, but just illustrates how tough these calls are. And one coach will hate it either way, right? And you're going to have to strip me off the ceiling either way, right? So. Uh, so that's really tough, but uh, here's uh, one call that uh, my, where is it, uh, good friend. Is that T. Swerdis? Is that Tony Trumbull? Is that Tony Trumbull? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tony Trumbull. That's awesome. You got it. So here is an uh, interesting situation. Uh, this is the end of the game at Algoma. Ottawa was up by like 25 points, uh, and this is like one second to go. This is Ottawa coach. Uh, the days you played other lights or uh Yes, Charles. Yes, Charles. I was there, Augie. I know. I, I know. <laughs> Steve Fox got to have your ass with that. So what's happening here? Way too long, but that's nothing. I stayed 40 minutes after the game. 40 minutes, because James was shaking. He thought that it was a sporting foul on his player. His Why biggest. If we, if we handle it in the first quarter, we don't have to handle it in the first quarter. Was he like this all game long? No, no. But he took exception to this call because uh, the game was over, like 30 points uh, for Ottawa, and it was the play that I thought Algoma battled them till the last second. They didn't give up, and they played as hard as it gets. And I thought that, uh, the, the whole crew thought that uh, the player who made the contact uh, played hard defense, and he didn't go with the intention. And even the player just got up from the floor and walked away, right? But James took exception. He was shaking. So you see what happened here. Uh, Go back and play the game. I will. Uh, you should recognize it. Let's challenge. Oh, we couldn't see the foul. It, it doesn't matter. But look at both players are up. There's nothing there. 
So my partner, yeah. my partner gave uh, James a lot of time to cool down, a lot of time. Still <laughs> patient with him. Even started the free throw thinking, okay, but then he escalated, technical foul. So one thing to learn from this though, guys, or, uh, and gals, sorry. Um, <coughs> Did the, the official even turn around to address at all? So would it have been better yes. to maybe turn around a little bit, maybe engage a little bit, say, hey, please calm down? Because really, the body language is such that you're really not, you're listening, you're listening, but you're not addressing. And really, that's making him more and more mad because he's thinking you're not listening. So that's, that's a real problem. Oh, exactly. So that's one of the suggestions, so turn it over to him the coach. We don't need technical foul. We understand uh, and just be kind of uh, uh, calming and stuff. Uh, there are officials like that. They don't like to engage with coaches. They will give them a lot of time. And I can't fault Tony for doing that. If, I, if it was me, and you can see, like I spent a lot of time with him. But what was my intention there? And look at my body language. Uh, I was trying to calm him down. When I showed stop sign, that's, that's something that I really wanted to address in this clip. It was a little bit too high. When you show stop sign as a last resort, direct it down. Because, it's like, oh, yeah. Exactly. It, it was a little bit too high. These little nuances in, 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 in signals and behavior mean a lot. But the good thing was I was completely accepting and uh, uh, trying to be compassionate with him. And uh, there was nothing he could do, again, short of physically assaulting me. Uh, so that I call the second take the fall and eject the coach with one second to go in a 30 point game, right? That doesn't make sense. So it was all about uh, giving him space to calm down and uh, so that we can now uh, proceed with the game. Uh, that's one. Oh, I have some other. So, travel, right? Pretty obvious. So, my partner, who is by the coach, calls the, that's a little wrench, and that's the coach. So, look what the, you actually can see. So, real time, look at the coach and what happens once my partner passes. He claps vigorously in his face. Technical fall from the other side. <laughs> That's one and only, Dave Maxim. So, look at what Dave does. He lets the coach go high with his emotions and stuff, and he's still not doing anything, coach is still on the floor, that's enough, bang. And I'm gonna show you the last one that uh, really, this is a kind of a high stakes, uh, pretty emotional game. And this is the demeanor that uh, we should all uh, kind of uh, strive towards. Technical foul. He's cool, cool as a cucumber, right? We're going to report like it's nobody's business and life goes on. All right. One more plate. This one here. Pay attention to the travel here. Oh. oh, okay. Shall we do it one more time? Did she start to dribble? I think she started. Let's do it again now that you know what we're doing here. Pay attention to foul that was missed too. Foul. She goes down. She dribbled. So, tell me what you saw, Lloyd. <clears throat> we missed the foul. Forget that now, but take you have to remember, you missed the foul. She goes well, down, I, right? I, I think she's starting to dribble. Long, long so she lifted one knee, but before she lifts the second one, she starts to dribble. It's a, it's a so who is calling travel on this? Take Our a third. So should I show that? So did we discuss this? <laughs> We discussed this play on the Zim, and uh, we still have like a 50-50. Uh, what this breaks down to is what's the definition of attempt to get up? Pardon me, attempt to stand up. 
What's the definition of that? Personally, I'm letting this go. Because there's nobody around this way. Nobody. We missed the foul. The intent of the rule is to protect the player from injury. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying my opinion. I'm totally not saying I'm right or wrong. Because we had like a probably 15, 16 top officials and we're split right down the middle. Half of them would call travel, half of them wouldn't. But what drives me to just let that play looks just fine to me like a basketball play. Not that she didn't get advantage by getting up, right? Because nobody was around her. We just missed the foul. Just play on. Nobody's there. So that's, but these are the plays where, like, you gotta stop and think. And it's hard because you have to make the decision in split seconds, right? So, I've got nothing else for you guys. I have more plays, but I think uh, we need to take a break now.